Good evening and welcome to this brand new edition of Trending at 10 on NDTV. I'm Sanket Upadhyay. In this show, we attempt to tell you the news behind the trend. Why is something trending? What you need to know? 10 top stories explained right here. Of course, Maharashtra is the biggest story. So let's first pull up these graphics and tell you what exactly has happened all through the day. So in the Maharashtra political thriller, President's rule has been imposed. Assembly right now is in a state of suspended animation. Sena in the meanwhile has moved the top court saying that the governor is working at the BJP's behest, a direct allegation by the Shiv Sena. Sharad Pawar as well as Ahmed Patel say they received a call from the Shiv Sena only yesterday. So how can you expect them to quickly take such a reforming decision or a big decision? You have to wait. Uddhav Thakre reminds the BJP, says, well, you wished that we ally with the NCP. So here we are. We have done exactly that. We have reached out to them. He says the BJP wished us the best to ally with the NCP. We have six months to talk to the Congress as well as the NCP. Narayan Rane, on the other hand, who's now with the BJP, says BJP will try and form the government. They haven't given up hope. They say we'll try to form the government. Fadnavis is going to take all the efforts. In the meanwhile, the biggest breaking news story that came in just a short while ago, there are reports of a rotational chief minister formula this time around between the NCP's Sharad Pawar and Shiv Sena's Uddhav Thakur. So that brings us to what we are about to show you on the show over the next 30 minutes. Our Maha Twist Kare. We are chronicling the political twists and turns in the Maharashtra saga since the 24th of October. Till last count, there are about 12, perhaps 13, if you count the latest twist that happened just a short while ago. Then, we also get you on the show, what's in the Shiv Sena's petition. Remember, they have filed a petition in the Supreme Court. It became infructuous, so they are all set to file another petition. That's story number two on trending at 10, which we are going to follow. What's in the Shiv Sena's petition? NCP Congress, they say, is principally willing to support us. That is going to be story number two. And story number three, the Maha Maneuvers and its impact. The Alliance Realignment in Jharkhand. Remember, this is not just limited to Maharashtra. It could have its impact in other states uh, with other alliance partners also of the NDA. And we could see that happening in the state of Jharkhand, which is also going to poll. So that's... That's what you can expect on the show. Let's first begin with trend number one, story number one, explained right here. So what are the big twists and turns in the Maharashtra saga? Twist number one, ladies and gentlemen, the Shiv Sena asked for a 50-50 seat sharing formula post the Maharashtra elections. We are aware, we are aware that they did so. Now what happened after that? Well, came twist number two within a few days. What was twist number two? Let's quickly fire that graphic on the screen to tell you what twist number two is. BJP refused to entertain the 50-50 formula. They said that the alliance will be at break point if, if there is this demand, continuous demand from the Shiv Sena. Then came twist number three. Shiv Sena started nursing ambitions of forming its own government minus what? Minus the BJP. So that was the twist number three. Then came twist number four, ladies and gentlemen, where there were signs of Sena and the BJP softening their position. All of this has happened between the 24th of October and today. And we could see this on a number of occasions being spoken about of the BJP and the Sena trying to go soft on one another, all the branches being sent, all thought that this alliance is actually going to sail through. Then came twist number five. Twist number five was when the Sena and BJP renewed their attack because Mr. Sharad Pawar wanted to propel the Sena to power. By now, the Sena could actually see that they have a new friend in Sharad Pawar. Was that right? Well, there are more twists in sight. Twist number six now. And what is that twist? Up on the screen. Sena shifts its MLAs to a hotel. Congress shifting its MLAs to a resort in Jaipur, fearing, they were fearing Operation Kamal in the state 
of Maharashtra that the BJP is going to eat into, start sniffing and eat into the share of the Shiv Sena as well as the Congress and they were vulnerable. The Congress and the Shiv Sena thought that they were vulnerable. Then came twist number seven where the BJP refused to form a government in Maharashtra. They said, since we don't have the numbers, we're not going to form the government. Then what happened? Then came twist number eight and this is not ending. Sena was called by the governor, uh, governor Bhagat Singh Koshyari to prove the numbers for government po formation. Pawar plus Congress was the possible alliance to get 56 to ally with 54 and 44 to reach or cross that magic figure of 145. But did that happen? No. There was a twist number nine. The Congress started dilly-dallying and that happened yesterday where the Congress started dilly-dallying on support to the Sena the governor rejecting Sena's claim on numbers. And that was the press conference by Aditya Uddhav Thakre, who said that we could not produce the numbers, but our request has not been rejected. Then came twist number 10, where by late evening yesterday, the NCP was asked to prove the majority by the governor. They were given 24 hours. And then came twist number 11, where even before the deadline could expire, Mr. Sharad Pawar, he called up the governor and said, give us more time. And thus the governor recommended central rule, which was also recommended by the union cabinet. And thus by evening, president's rule was there. It existed in Maharashtra. And then came twist number 12, which is also significant, where the NCP announced that the Sena will move court. And this is amazing. This is the dance of democracy in this country. Listen to me very carefully. NCP announces that the Sena will move court against central rule and guess who's defending them? A Congress lawyer. So if there is no alliance in Maharashtra, what stops these people from having an alliance in a petition in the Supreme Court? Those are the 12 twists and turns and there is one more 13 which is not there on the graphic and I would like to tell you about it, is that now there is talk of a rotational chief minister between the Shiv Sena as well as the NCP. This figure of 13 is only going to rise because we still do not have a lot of answers. We only have a lot of questions. Joining me right now is uh, Geeta Bhatt, political analyst Geeta Bhatt is with me. Uh, good evening, Geeta. What do you make of these developments? Well, uh, Sanket, uh, it is very clear that, uh, you know, uh, Shiv Sena, which uh, had a pre-poll alliance with BJP, uh, and had, had gone to the people of Maharashtra and asked for their votes based on the fact that they were having an alliance and if voted in power, together will be forming a government. Later on decided to, uh, you know, move in a different direction and um, uh, not even going for, uh, for, a, for a discussion which was uh, meant to be on 30th of last month. They refused to go there and their political leaders, they came out and made, made it very clear that uh, they, they had a very limited uh, agenda of making sure that uh, Mr. Thakre has to be the chief minister. And you know, with this kind of a background, uh, when uh, the largest uh, party, uh, which is BJP, when was asked uh, by the governor, they said that they are not in a position since they did not have the majority. Uh, Shiv Sena was asked to uh, come and form the government. Now, they have, they had already uh, sacrificed uh, their cabinet uh, uh, minister at, in the central government, in a way severing their ties with the NDA just to satisfy NCP because that was uh, in a way a precondition which was put forward to them. And in spite of doing so, what happened uh, the Shiv, when Shiv Sena was asked to come, was asked to uh, claim their, uh, stake their claim to form the government, uh, when uh, Mr. Aditya Thakre went uh, to Raj Bhavan, he, he was not very sure because uh, they, they were expecting, Shiv Sena was expecting that uh, there will be a fax which will be coming Gita, or a letter will be coming for the support of support Dr. from NCP Bhatt. Congress, but uh, Bhatt, somehow that did not happen. Yeah, yeah, one moment. Dr. Bhatt, I want to ask you, uh, will the same allegation not hold true uh, for the BJP as well? I mean, you are accusing the Shiv Sena of, uh, of obsessively asking for their chief minister. Wasn't that the same condition or political ego that even the BJP had, that we will retain our chief minister? 
Well, Sanket, uh, if you look at the numbers, I mean, you know, in 1995, when they, we had, when BJP Shiv Sena had formed the government, at that time, Bala Saab Thakre, you know, in a form, what was actually natural justice, that whosoever gets more seats is going to form the government. And at that time, it was the Shiv Sena, uh, Mr. Manohar Joshi, who had become the so chief minister. They have gone back now, on their word. Now, 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 the same formula should, should have... I mean, you know, that is what would have heard. Who has a larger number of seats? So, it definitely, it was okay. BJP. Let me ask you a political question, Geeta Bhatt. What are the chances of the NCP, Congress and the Shiv Sena being able to uh, work out their common minimum program, keep ideology or ideological leanings aside, get together, and by such time, and we know that the BJP moves fast, as opposed to a Congress which takes its own sweet time, the BJP too moves. Remember, you've got the Congress MLAs in a resort in Jaipur and the Shiv Sena MLAs in a hotel. The fear yes. is that the BJP will try to cobble together some sort of an alliance by breaking these two parties. What is the likelihood Sank of this? Sanket, it is one more. There, there definitely is a trust deficit in between parties, even between NCP and Congress, considering that uh, you know, NCP leaders, while they already had time till 8.40 today mm. to come go to the governor, they sent the letter already at 11.40 to Raj Bhavan saying that they need more time, they are not prepared right now. And although their meeting with, the, with their own party MLAs was at 1 p.m., it very well shows. Mm. And Congress did not know what to, uh, what to talk about okay. it. In fact, in the press conference, the joint press conference, which was just held in the evening, Mr. Ahmed Patel was saying that why they were not asked uh, by the governor to come and form so the you government. you feel that the problems Looks like have they were, they were only wanting, just begun. They had a thinking, they thought that, you know, just like they made Mr. Kumar okay. Swami, uh, you know, who had just 38 seats, the chief minister okay. of Karnataka, okay. The same could have happened, okay. you know, should have, ha can happen in Maharashtra. Okay. So, there, there definitely is a lot of trust deficit. Doc, doc, Dr. Bhatt, I don't know where the trust deficit is. It first started with between the BJP and the Shiv Sena. You are saying that now it is between or it exists between uh, these three unusual allies. Uh, politics in Maharashtra is getting very, very interesting and we haven't heard the last. Thank you so much, Dr. Bhatt, for joining us on part one of Trending at 10. Uh, part two or story number two on your screen right now. The Shiv Sena has moved court. It has moved the Supreme Court. Uh, they filed a petition. That is petition number one on your screen, which in a way becomes infructuous because uh, President's rule ha has been imposed. They're studying and hopefully very soon they will have a petition number two challenging President's rule that has been imposed in the state of Maharashtra. How are they going to go about? And it's, it's an unusual alliance in the Supreme Court where you see that the NCP in the afternoon spoke about the Shiv Sena going to court and it's a Congress lawyer, Mr. Kapil Sibbal, who's going to defend the Shiv Sena. Now, you speak to anyone and Arvind, my, my colleague, is now with us. Arvind is very clear that Mr. Kapil Sibbal is not going to move in a, political, a politically volatile case like this on his own. This could pretty well be a, a concerted strategy uh, where, where Kapil Sibbal could have the go-ahead to defend the Shiv Sena. What exactly was there in this petition or what is likely in petition number two? Sanket, uh, Shiv Sena has moved a writ petition in the Supreme Court. In fact, they sought an urgent hearing today itself, but registry did not grant them that particular request for an urgent hearing today. So what we are hearing is that tomorrow morning at 10.30 a.m., Shiv Sena will be moving the Supreme Court asking for an urgent hearing tomorrow itself. So in their writ petition, they have come up with four prayers. One, quash the decision of the governor uh, rejecting the claim of Shiv Sena to form the government. That was the first prayer. Second prayer is this, that caused the decision of the governor who rejected the request of Shiv Sena seeking three more, day, uh, three more days time to demonstrate the majority. Third is a direction to be issued to governor uh, asking to uh, give reasonable time to uh, Shiv Sena to demonstrate their uh, majority. Fourth is to uh, give a direction to uh, governor uh, ordering uh, floor test uh, uh, majority to be tested in uh, tested in the floor. So these four are the imp uh, these four are the prayers that have been moved by Shiv Sena. Like uh, when we see the respondent in that particular matter, Shiv Sena is the petitioner. Uh, first respondent is uh, Union Government. Second is uh, State Government. Third and fourth is third is NCP and fourth is Congress. So it, it clearly shows that it's a very it's a very well uh, discussed petition. That when Shiv Sena moved this uh, uh, petition, they have also said that we are in uh, talks with NCP and also in Congress. And that particular talk is in advanced stage. In fact, uh, Uddhav Thakre 
has also had a telephonic conversation with uh, Sonia Gandhi and uh, both these parties have shown willingness to support Shiv Sena mm -hmm. to form the government. So it's a very well uh, drafted, very well uh, drafted uh, strategy between all these three parties. So Kapil Sibyl will be appearing for NC, uh, for Shiv Sena. We have to see whether who will be appearing for NCP and also Congress because both these parties are also responding in that petition. All right. Thank you, Arvin. And uh, you have your task cut out when, uh, when this petition is up for hearing. Thank you so much. Aishwarya Bhatti, she's a senior lawyer, is also with us. Good evening, Aishwarya. I want to know from you, why is it that the role of the governor uh, quite often, especially in, in uh, tumultuous and volatile political times, ends up in courts? Can you give us some sort of a uh, history of this and, and what, is a, what is a good resolution to this? I don't think necessarily it is a bad thing that the decision of the governor ends up in court. I think that shows the the dynamics and uh, you know the vibrancy of our system, uh, our democratic principles and our cons constitutional ethos uh, uh, do uh, prescribe this kind of a situation. I, uh, that's exactly where I would like to see all disputes coming. Courts of law are meant for that. But having that said so, uh, we know the political games of our country and, uh, you know, uh, the constitutional mandate for the governor in situations where uh, the majority does not, uh, is not in a position to form the government. Uh, there is a greater uh, discretion and a, a greater strength and power that is available with the governor uh, in the cases of state. And uh, if it's a case of center, then obviously it is the president of the country. Um, uh, but uh, um, having said so, I think uh, we also have more than 200 instances in our country for the last 70 years of this, including some landmark uh, judgments of SR Bombay, etc., where uh, you know the Constitution prescribes that uh, the governor's satisfaction cannot be brought into question. But the Supreme Court uh, expanded that to say that the material on the basis of which the governor has formed an opinion about the breakdown of constitutional machinery can definitely be questioned. Uh, now the norms, uh, you know, the legal uh, principles are well settled. Uh, the floor test uh, is the is the most important criteria. Uh, you know, uh, asking for letters of uh, support is also mm. um, now making sure that you know less horse trading happens. And ultimately, democracy does allow a leeway for all this. The, of course, Ashura, very quickly, does how not much of the how much of the Bomai judgment can be implemented in a case like this? What what do you reckon? Uh, is this case or, or does the Bomai case judgment or the Bomai judgment uh, have any learnings for this situation? Very briefly. So SR Bomai, Bomai is the landmark constitution bench judgment on the uh, powers of uh, how article 356 is to be there and those principles like I was mentioning are well settled now. Uh, they, those principles need not be re-argued. Uh, the question now is to apply those principles in these facts. So, see, the system is, is so dynamic that uh, you wouldn't have the same set of facts every time. The set of facts uh, in, a, in a democratic setup are very, very different. Uh, here is not a case where you don't, it's not a case of hung assembly, so to speak. Okay. Here is a case where a pre-poll alliance, which has a clear majority, has for some reasons failed to form the government. <laughs> Now, the, the period of the assembly is over. You could either put, it, put the state in limbo or you could put the assembly in a suspended animation. Only the legislative work cannot be carried out by the assembly. Okay. That alone is the repercussion. Otherwise, the affairs of the state go on. And as soon as any of the parties or combination of parties can conjure up the numbers and uh, you know satisfy the, the governor on the basis of the letters, okay. which is the done thing these days, that they have the majority, the president rule goes and okay. they can form the government. Okay. Aishwarya Bhatti, many thanks. Let's just hope that uh, a petition comes in soon, uh, as has been said. And if that's the case, what is the Supreme Court going to decide? Will it admit or will it dispose it of? Thank you so much, Aishwarya Bhatti, for giving us the legal perspective. Moving on to story number three now, as you can see, that what the events that are unfolding in Maharashtra don't just have their impact in Maharashtra. There is a, another election in Jharkhand, and it seems that there is an alliance problem for the Bharatiya Janata Party in the state of Jharkhand as well. I call it the alliance realignment, where two critical allies, the JDU as well as the LGP, are now flexing their muscles. Listen in to what they had to say. Kya wajah hai ki ghatak dal ek saath nahi reh paaye Jharkhand mein? Samanwe ka abhav hai aur talmil ki kami hai. 
आप महत्वपूर्ण बात कह रहे हैं आप कह रहे हैं कि इस मुद्दे पर एन के अंदर एकजुटता नहीं है तालमेल नहीं है क्या बातचीत हुई थी बीजेपी से नहीं बातचीत का कोई प्रस्ताव बड़े पार्टी यानी कि भाजपा की तरफ से कभी किसी स्टेज पर नहीं आया इसीलिए बात कोई आगे नहीं बढ़ती है समय रहते हुए क्लैरिटी हो ताकि हम लोग के प्रत्याशी हम लोग के नेता मैदान में उतरे चुनाव प्रचार की तैयारी करें तो अंत में आज पार्टी ने निर्णय लिया है सुबह ट्वीट करके भी मैंने जानकारी साझा की है कि हम लोग लगभग पचास सीटों पर लोक जनशक्ति पार्टी अपने उम्मीदवार उतारेगी All right that's all the time we have in explaining the top 3 stories I hope you like this brand new edition of trending at 10 do leave your comments on my on my twitter timeline at sanket you can also write in to @ndtv and tell us what you would like to see we'd love to take your comments as well